Hello everyone. My name is Rotimi Olushegun. Um, you are welcome to this YouTube channel where you have the opportunity to learn about detailed engineering designs for mostly rotating equipment and static equipment you will come across in um, oil and gas industries, petrochemicals, and even FMCG industry. So remember to click the subscribe button below and then like some of our videos so that you can always get notifications because in the coming weeks we are going to be uploading some of the video tutorials on um, on different rotating equipments from compressors to to pumps to steam turbines gas turbines and even static equipment such as mechanical designs techniques for pressure vessels, you know, columns, heat exchangers, and so on and so forth. So I would like you to click the subscribe button and then like some of our videos. So today we are moving straight to what we have, and that is um, centrifugal pumps. Centrifugal pumps. So under centrifugal pumps, I'm starting with a title understanding pump head because you know as far as pumping system is concerned understanding what pump head is all about is very vital to understand every other concept of um, pumping system most especially you know centrifugal pump um centrifugal pumping systems so and you know from my interactions one-on-one -on -one interactions with you know so many mechanical you know process or even chemical or instrumentation engineers they find the concept of pump head you know very difficult to comprehend and it's actually and it's actually very simple so i want you to sit back you know put your writing materials and follow me as i break it down you know into into pieces so pump head when they ask you pump head what do you understand by pump head now imagine you have a centrifugal pump taking suction from a supply tank or you call it suction tank and delivering it through a discharge pipe into a discharge tank up there now i want you to imagine something that you move the discharge line imagine that you move the discharge line of the pump right so that it pumps straight up into the air with the pump in operation what do you think will happen as long as the pump is running it will move the liquid to some height measured in what to some height measured in meter now that height to which the pump can raise the water to is called the pump head that height up to which a particular centrifugal pump can raise the water to is called its head now you will need to see that if a pump can produce more pressure what do you think will happen it can pump water higher and therefore produce a higher head so that maximum height that the pump can achieve pumping against gravity is what is referred to as the pump head. Now, I want you to see how this pump head now varies with what? How it varies with your suction tank level because this has a huge impact on your pumping operations. Now, I have here three different scenarios with, with different suction levels. Now, with an increase in your suction level, you are going to have a higher pump head capability. With a lower suction tank level, you are going to have a lower pump head capability. So, what this implies is that as your suction conditions changes, your pump head capability also change. 
So now, as you are raising or lowering the suction level of the liquid at your pump suction, what you are doing is that you are adjusting the potential energy of the liquid available at the pump at the pump suction. So if you consider the first two cases that I put here, H1, H2, H1 is the pump head capability for pump one. H2 is the pump head capability for pump two. And you can see the assumption level. With an increase in suction level for case two, you can see the pump head capacity. You can see that the height to which that particular pump can pump straight up to is higher than what you have in H1. Same thing if you go to H3, the pump three. The pump head capability for pump three is higher than what you can achieve with what? With pump two. And this is as a result of what? The suction tank level. Now, as you are raising or lowering the suction level of the liquid, you are adjusting what? What I call the potential energy of the liquid available at your pump suction. Now, you also need to know another concept which is called the total head total head now you've seen the different cases on how pump head varies with your suction tank level now a much more useful of head is that difference between the liquid level in the suction tank and the head in the vertical discharge pipe. That difference in liquid level at your discharge end of the pump and what you have at the suction tank level is what is referred to as the total head that the pump can produce. So when you hear the word total head, it is the difference between the liquid level in your suction tank and the head that you have in the vertical discharge pipe. That difference is the total head. So, increasing the level of the liquid in the suction tank, we do what? We give rise to increased head, like I mentioned. And decreasing the level, we do what? We give rise to a lower head capability for a particular pump. So, oftentimes, pump manufacturers and suppliers, they won't tell you how much head a pump can produce because they cannot predict what the height of the liquid in your suction tank will be. You are the one in control of your suction tank level. So they cannot tell you, they cannot predict what the height of the liquid will be at any given point. Instead, what they do is they report the pump's total head, which is nothing but the difference in height between the level of the liquid in your suction tank, in your, sup in your supply tank, and the height of a column of liquid that the pump can achieve. That is why it is always advisable when you are calculating the total head requirements. You calculate the total head requirements based on a suction empty tank as that is when you will need the pump to produce the most energy because there is no potential energy available at that suction empty tank. So you need the pump to provide the most energy at that level. So you calculate the total head requirements, which is that difference between the liquid level at the distant end of the pump and what you have as the liquid level in your supply tank. So with an empty you know, some suction tank. The liquid is not giving any help at all in the form of potential energy when the tank, when the tank is, when the tank is empty. So, now that you know what total head is all about, you can translate it into an equation, which is the total head is that difference 
between the pump head at the discharge end of the pump, which I refer to as your HD here, and your suction tank level. So that is your what? That is your that is your total that is your total head. So you can use that expression. Now we also have um, another concept which is a negative suction head system where you have your pump suction tank below the pump center line. So imagine you are drawing liquid from a tank with same pump where the level of the liquid is you know below the pump center line which is referred to as negative suction head the pump will still produce the same total head though, but the discharge head at that discharge line referred to as your hd will definitely go down what this simply means is that you won't have enough pressure to run your device if you use the same pump that you have you know for a positive suction head system to and you use that same pump for a negative suction head without you know calculating how much head you need for your process applications so what this means is you may need to consider getting a pump with a higher total head so in a nutshell to buy the correct pump for your applications you first have to know what total head you need in your system you first have to know what total head you need for your system be it a positive suction system with the supply tank at the pump center line or a negative suction system with the supply tank below the pump center line so to buy the correct pump for your applications you first have to know what 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 total head you need and at what flow rates these two are very very important they are very important so now look here in this figure you have here imagine you have a pump transferring liquid from the suction tank like i said previously into a vertical pipe where the liquid rises until it can overcome the force of gravity remember the pump is pumping against gravity so with a discharge pipe up and the pump is in running mode delivering into that discharge pipe the liquid will begin to rise until it can't overcome the force of gravity and what do you think will happen it quits rising in this situation you have your flow of pump to be zero the pump is working though, but the force of gravity causes the water's rise in the vertical discharge pipe to stop and the net flow stops that height that height at which the the pump cannot produce water beyond is what is called short of head the short of head is the amount of head a pump can produce at at zero at zero flow to choose to choose your required pump you need to know two things very important the total head and what flow rate you require the maximum head which is the short of head is achieved at a flow rate of zero so increasing flow rate introduces friction into the system as the liquid travels along the pipes from the you know the suction tank to the pump same way from the pump into the discharge pipe this friction reduces the amount of total head that the pump can produce in fact 
as the flow increases, friction in your system increases, and the total head continue to decrease. So the amount of head that is lost due to friction is what is called the friction head loss or friction loss. So in a system where there is flow, the total head is the difference between, you know, the discharge head and the suction head plus the friction head. And this sum is going to be less than what you have as your what? The short of the short of head. Okay. Now, every every pump every centrifugal pump will be supplied with a performance curve plotting head you know versus flow rate because these are the two important you know terms that you need before you can before you can procure a pump a centrifugal pump for any applications in your system so Every centrifugal pump will be supplied with a performance curve plotting the head in meter versus the flow rates which can be expressed in either cubic meter per hour or your liter per minute. Now, that plot of head versus flow rates is known as the pump's performance curve. Right? Now, Every centrifugal pump, like I mentioned, will be supplied with a performance curve plotting the head versus flow rates. The required flow rates and the total head which you have determined will intersect at a certain point, at a certain point on the pump's performance curve. And comparing this to the pump's curve will allow you to determine whether that particular pump will be appropriate or not. Okay? So, you have here, you can see, that maximum head that your pump can achieve at zero flow is what is called your shut-off head, which you, have at a, which you have on your pump performance curve. So, how this is what pump head is all about. So, by now you know what pump head is. You know what, how to obtain your total head. You know your short of head. So, now there is a question that I need to, to ponder on. Why is head used as a measure of pump's ability to pump liquid rather than pressure. So I will need your answer at the comment section. Right? Why is head used as a measure of pump's ability to pump liquid rather than pressure? So drop your points at the comment section. So, and we can continue to discuss from there. So, I would also like to hear from your, from your end. So, um, this is going to be the end of this session on pump head. We are still going to be uploading some other videos for other topics on centrifugal, on centrifugal pumping systems. So, click the subscribe button so that you can get notification whenever the video is uploaded so thank you very much